Hi, I'm Rumper, and I wasted four months of my life so I can finally drop a 4K. Are you kidding me? I knew I should have never hired that electrician off of Craigslist. Let's just... As I said earlier, I'm Rumper. I make video games. And I also play way too much Apex Legends. So for this video, I Dr. Frankenstein them together and task myself with making the best Apex fan game ever made. And I can tell you, with great confidence, that I succeeded. Yeah! Mostly because there isn't any other Apex fan games out there. But that's not the point. I very much dubbed out. So without further ado, and for the second time, let us begin. So the first thing on my checklist to do was make some art. See, the only problem with this is, I HATE ART! Wow. wow, that actually helped me relieve a lot of stress. I guess I'll go make some characters and props now. But I do need to get that art palette back. Give me that art palette back. Meow. Give it. Meow. Listen here, you little feline. Hey, hey, ah, ah. Wait, what are you grabbing? Meow. Wait, please, anything but that, anything but that. Uh, at least I got the palette back. Meow. Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another game making tutorial. Today, we are going to make a map. The first step is, you're gonna wanna get all your art assets together. Once that's all made, you can boot up Unity and then whip out your handy dandy tile palette tool. And then, you're just gonna wanna start vigorously clicking. And that's the basics of it. Now, you're just gonna wanna do that again and 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 again. And that's basically how you make a map. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. Alright, now that we have a map, we need characters to place on said map. And the design process for that is basically drawing the sprites for the character, and then to check if the design matches the character, I scream for my brother. Caleb! I'm right here, man. Oh yeah. And then we basically play a game called Who's That Character? I love you, Rumper! Thanks, random lady. Alright, quiet down. Welcome to Who's That Character? I'm your host, Rumper54. And if you're new here, the rules are quite simple. An image will pop up on screen for three seconds, and your job is to guess who that character is. See? I told you it was simple. And today, we have a great episode lined up. So let's not diddle around, and let's get right to it. Producer, hit it. Okay, let's reveal the image for round one. For legal purposes, if you guessed hit character rape, you'd be correct! Not too bad of a first round. I think most of us got that. The next one's a little trickier though, so let's move on to round two. Alright, let's roll the tape. If you guessed famed healer lifeline, you would be... Incorrect! This is Chinese bootleg ripoff, Rife Rhyme. Is... is that really in the script? Can... can I say that? H hold on, let me go check with the producers. Okay, the producers told me, quote, the Asian homies are mad chill. It's all good. So I guess that's 
that. We uh we had this Bibby guy as our last character, but I think uh I think we're wrapping it up here. So thanks for watching. Who's that character? Rumper, I take it back. Damn it. Cool. Now that we have a mapping character, let's actually make them do things. I started this by making some simple directional movement. That boy moving. Then expanded upon it by giving the player a roll and the ability to phase in case they're in trouble. Next, I let them contemplate their life choices. Then I gave him a gun. The thing about a gun, though, is what's the point of it if there are no enemies? So, let's make some. Nice. I kept. Not nice. Not nice. By the way, in case you are wondering how I'm doing all this, I use Visual Studio, the programming software I use, and code in C Sharp. I then script furiously for a couple hours, and after that, you just jam the script into the character and voila, it works. Kill me. Most of the time. Okay, maybe like 50% of the time. Yeah, so that was more or less kinda how I make these things. Sorry to the nerds for not going into insane detail about how I make them. It just takes a long, long time to make it, and it's also extremely boring. So it's easier to just show what it does rather than how it's made. But because of that, you only get to see the surface level stuff, not the stuff that makes you want to shove your head through a wall. For example, in Apex, when you kill an enemy, they conveniently drop a death box. Great. I can just use that as the pickup system. Easy. easy. But you are wrong. It was not easy. It was very, very hard. I spent two weeks programming, designing, arting? I think that's what you call it. A beautiful, majestic death box. But it was also clunky as hell. And in the end, I just had to bite the bullet and make it Fortnite. Okay, let's get back on track. Where were we? That's right. We have a character, map, enemies, and a pickup system. But our pickup system has nothing to drop. So let's whip some up. I made the pickup system into two parts, guns and items. I will explain the difference later. I started with the weapons because the only gun currently is the P20. And I hate the P20. So let's add the car, peacekeeper, R301, sentinel, bolt, wingman, and of course, who can forget, the Mozambique. Mozambique, yeah. They may all basically do the same thing, but that's fine. For now. All right, cool. The player has a bunch of weapons, but how is the player supposed to get all those weapons? Unless the enemies have them all too. I'll be right back. Noise. Okay. We have the guns finished, but that's only 50% of the equation. Now you have to add the items. These weren't actually too bad to make, mostly because it's just a couple of healing items, you know, med kits, syringes, shield batteries, shield cells, and then an ammo drop. And then the coolest of the items, the arc star. <laughs> Finally, I'm finished. So now that we have the whole equation, let me show you how it works. Basically, if you look super closely, you can actually see Wraith is a giant magnet. And the reason I split up the guns and items is because if you go near any item, the items will fly towards Wraith and automatically be picked up. But the guns are a little different. In Apex, as you play the game, your attachments get better and in turn, so does your weapon. And I wanted to do the same thing. But I'm not putting every single attachment in the game and having the player swap them out every 5 seconds. Instead, I made it so if you see a duplicate of your weapon on the floor, it will act like an item and start floating towards Wraith. Until it sees Loba's ass and beelines it that way. God damn! Okay, that was a lie. What actually happens is the item will float towards Wraith, and when she picks it up, 
it'll level the gun up and obviously make it better. The weapon's level cap is at purple, and it's nice for the late game, but it's not necessary, so if you want to experiment, you can. Alright, at this point we have most of our core mechanics completely finished. We got guns we can shoot, enemies to shoot at, a healing system, and a pickup system. So now, I just have to surround the player with some stuff to do. So, I made an intro cutscene, this cool little Bangalore ultimate, I made a part where I gave Octane some Jordans, what the heck? and I also added the Evo system so you can level up your shield. And overall, I just made more skins for the enemies and more places to fight. And at this point, I was already two months into development and was getting very burnt out. So I thought the game was at the point where it's good enough that I can polish and finish it up. So once everything was up to code, I called over my cousin and had him playtest it so I can get some feedback. So, what did you think? Yeah, um... Overall, everything feels clunky, the enemies take way too long to kill, your character moves way too slow, all the guns are the exact same, there's only one cutscene, the jokes aren't funny, the mechanics feel sluggish, the intro cutscene doesn't even tell you how to play, the UI doesn't have a kill feed, damage counter, or kill counter, the lasagna was subpar, and yeah, it was just kinda bad. <laughs> My game? Bad? I'll show you this game is bad! Apparently everything's lame, so I had to add a cooler tutorial because the other one wasn't good enough. The UI is bleak, I guess I'll just have to add a main menu, kill counter, damage counter, squad counter, kill feed, and even a round timer for the speedrunners. Finding enemies is boring? Well the enemies now have knockback and smarter AI. The guns are one dimensional? Well, not anymore. The guns all have special abilities now. The Volt goes POW! The Wingman and Sentinel goes BANG! The Peacekeeper goes The car goes scissor. The R301 goes, wait, actually the R301 is the same, so, so it's the same. But, the P20 in Mozambique, I even made a little secret for, so if you can get them to level 4, it goes <laughs> And that still wasn't enough. I still hear yapping about there only being one cutscene, while well, I added cutscenes. Lots and lots of cutscenes. And still, wee wee wee, wee wee wee, there's nothing interactable on the map. Well here's some zip lines, caustic gas traps, Watson fences, rampart wall. Bangalore even does her classic Bangalore thing where she launches smokes at you. Oh, I friggin' hate Bangalore! Wait, I never actually tested Bangalore smokes. Hold on. Alright, I'm testing out Bangalore smoke grenade. Let's see how this goes. Oh, oh yeah, I'm supposed to be adding things. I then added a respawn station, best friends, revenant totem, secret mirages, this piece has like a thousand health. How are you not dead? I even added it's Timmy and Ace Boost skins with built in voice lines. Alright, let's test out the voice box. I will systematically weed all the lifelines out of the gene pool. Uh. Poggers. Now that's more like it. You can access the skins by typing it's Timmy or Asu in the main menu. And to finish it off, the icing on the cake. The most epic, insane boss for the most time! And you also get an Apex pack. Whew. I think I'm finally done. This took me an extra two months, so the game's probably not bad anymore, it's probably now just okay. So now this is the part where I pray to respawn, please let this game be. I worked really, really hard on this project, and I honestly made this game, so after working five hours on it, I had an excuse to hop on Apex and feel like I did something productive. I'm also making zero dollars directly off the game because I don't want to run ads on it, and my YouTube has 70 subscribers, so I can't even monetize it if I wanted to. The only way I will make any revenue is donations off of Itch and a Patreon. The link's down below. And in the next video, all the money that I made from this project 
will be put into the next project so I can show you guys how much more you can do with even a really small budget. Even though the money I'm going to make from this video is most likely only going to get me a spicy chicken sandwich from Chick-fil-A. But hey, I call that a good deal. I love you spicy chicken sandwich. Okay, now that Respawn is hopefully in good graces with me, it's that's time. This part isn't so I can go, <coughs> Woe is me, look how long this took. No. This is going to be at the end of every video I make and is for me to look back at so I can see what I did good and bad with the project. So I can level up my skills and give you guys some more insight into how these projects are actually made and what ignites me. So now, let me change into something a little more professional. Now that I'm looking spiffy, I'm first going to go over how long it took to make this project. It took roughly 600 to 700 hours to make over 5 months, and I worked about 3 to 5 hours a day on the project. I would say about 550 hours were spent making the actual game. This entails coding, making art, writing, and designing the game. And then it took about 100 hours to edit the video, which is a little longer than usual because it was my first time making a production this big, and I had to figure out a lot of stuff. But damn, this timeline. Any editors looking at this, I'm sorry I just gave you an aneurysm. Now I want to talk about the project details. In total, I made 153 scripts to make the game work. And I would show you all the art that goes with the scripts, but I actually organized it too well. So instead, you'll have to look at these animations for reference. Each one of these triangles represents an animation, which are usually about 4-6 to six sprites long. So, a lot of art. And I would talk about all the scenes and how much stuff is in the inspector, but nobody cares so I'm just gonna go to the to the next part in this next spot I would talk about the amount of money views, subscribers I got from the last project but there are none so they'll just have to wait till the next that time and lastly I want to talk about the lessons I learned from making this project the biggest lesson I learned that isn't ah uh, make cleaner code or ah uh, make sound effect here would be my biggest mistake I should not have made a game on this large of a scale by myself. And this really shows with the art. I had to make all of it by myself and I suck at art, which means I had to do a lot of the animations in a really roundabout way. And that ended up making everything work, but it was all six out of 10 quality. So the game's fun and cool, but nothing blows you away. I'll give you a quick example. The Volt's ability is a right click that charges and shoots a giant yellow projectile. Oh my, what happened to my flowers? My beautiful Kala lilies! Ooh, that was a little embarrassing. We're just gonna pretend that didn't happen, and I'm gonna go explain what I imagined the Volt's like, and we're never gonna speak about this again. So, I imagine when you right click, Wraith takes the vault and you hear the charge start to creep in. Meanwhile, you can see Wraith grip the slide and yank it back almost as she was trying to start a chainsaw. Excuse me, have you seen where that loud explosion came from? Um, y yeah, it, it came from up there. Oh, why thank you, dearie. I just have a couple words for them. <laughs> no problem. Um, anyways, back to my imagination. You then see a faint yellow ball start this to slowly become larger and more intimidating in scale, and then BOOM! Rafe pulls the trigger and a beam will like blast Bitch. through the barrel, disintegrating any enemies that even come close. But in reality, it looks like this. Which does the same thing, but one has way more emphasis and pizzazz. It makes everything feel responsive and powerful. Which is why for my next project, I need to focus more on making a very small, but highly polished game. If I had to make this lesson into an analogy, it would be, the game I made is like a T-bone steak. It's good and tastes more than fine, but you aren't blown away by it. I should instead focus on making a game more like a grade 5 Wagyu beef. Smaller, but you savor every bite. And that's a wrap. I can finally reward myself with some mac and- Ah, oh, my eyes! Ah, oh, what the- Nah, I must be tripping. Yeah, he's definitely fake, right?
that shit out of here. God, it's real. I'm calling the police. <laughs> Where'd you win? Damn, where did you even get that from? You don't even have any pockets. That's not fair. That's not fair. Man, shut up. Ah. All right, I'm sorry. What do you want? I want your game. My company specializes in stealing, uh, I mean, taking games and turning them into content for our boss. Okay. Now, as per company guidelines, you have two options. You can either give me the game and we'll handle the rest. Or you can keep the game, but you'll have to make another video following some guidelines. So, what will it be? I, I guess I want to keep my game, but what are the guidelines? Oh, nothing too bad. Couple shocks here, couple paintballs there. Nothing too insane. Just take a look. Here's the paper. Thanks. Thanks for choosing BDC. The guidelines for your next shoot includes, but is not limited to, being egged, slapped, tased, shocked, shot, bopped, rolled, and even being put in a triangle choke. Warning: BDC.co terms of service does not hold us liable or reliable for any discomfort, pain, missing ligaments, disappearance of pet hamsters, or and death that can possibly occur during filming. Thanks for choosing us. Oh no. Twenty-one, 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 twenty-one. Me and Drake, he eat my ass like cake. So much money, bitch, I think I need a rake. He eat my booty out like I owe him in a state. Until it sees Loba's ass and beats lines it. And can be got be line get out. Fuck! But our pickup system has nothing to drop. So let's up. Uh I fucked it. Over here, over there is fucking epic. If I don't accidentally hit you, three, two, one. Oh, <laughs> <Are you> okay? <laughs> Ow! What the? F <laughs>